Someone showed me a, a, this cool jazz turnaround the other day that I've got to try and get. I've got to try and get that somewhere in the, in so the, I, in the jam. So I, mate, I, um, I did this session recently with um, an American artist called uh, Gallon. We did a cover of a song by Janet Jackson called I Get So Lonely. And I remember listening through to it a couple of times. And it's my favourite um, chord progression of right. all time, the song. Um, what is it? Try, I Share try, it. Yeah, right. i got to try and remember. But this is the thing, right? So I... Um, I'm diving straight in. I... I don't know... Um, I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing most of the time with a guitar kind of thing. Like, I've had... Sit down with... Uh, people who do know what I'm doing on a guitar and they know what they're doing on a guitar but I've I don't know the I have a basic understanding of the theory and the chords and I know what the numbers of the scale are and I know like what feelings they can produce but for me it's always been I've watched people play guitar and I've yeah. just then played it myself but this particular thing I remember a video uh, this video going out and my friend watching it and asking me if I knew the chords I was playing I was like I'm not <laughs> like, I just don't know, but but it's similar to that. I'm trying to think. It's um, uh, what key do we do it in? Um, Approach that because that's would you if you wrote if somebody wrote the chords down would you know what was would you know what you were playing I, or I, you, you sort of know shapes and roughly whether that's going to give it a sort of a that's major exactly or a minor the, kind yeah. of vibe and mm. that's exactly what it is is that like I understand that I know shapes and my ears my ears understand what my fingers need to be able to do to to play the things it's just my brain doesn't have the knowledge or the vocabulary to explain it. Yeah. kind of thing and that's kind of just been a very that's been a very consistent thing with me I think as a musician is um, like I can um, I've always said it like especially with the piano as well I have tricks I can do yeah. and then I just do them in different keys because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just that kind of thing so for me I, I remember um, as a kid because I never used to play electric I always used to just play acoustic especially when I was learning um, so I would teach myself Steve Ray Vaughan licks and stuff like that on the acoustic guitar um, I don't know why, because it's that, like it's so stupid. That's really hard because he just, yep. you know, it's all the him. bends exactly, yeah. Like, but yeah, like bending on thirteen, bleeding fingers, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. But and I'm trying to do that on my like Fleetwood red color <laughs> sunburst, like yeah. Shout out for Fleetwood, hey, guitars. right? I haven't heard them. For Where's that? For years. No, Actually, dude, no, yeah. Fleetwood was the first one I had. Then yeah. I had a Crafter, yeah. ML Boo Binger. Um, acoustic guitar which had this good oh my god it's so stupid I genuinely got it because of superficial reasons it had a uh, it had a, a mountain range oh nice etched into the yeah, fretboard beautiful. yeah right yeah There's really a, badly as well yeah I of expect. course it was yeah. good. no it was cool it was actually really nice and then around, and then around the, the around that bit they had uh, the phases of uh of a, of a American moon. presidents? No, no. Oh, okay. oh, phases. I think phases. Said faces. No, no. no. <laughs> I thought it was like like one of those, that sort of was the it face, Mount Rushmore? Faces of the American <laughs> presidents. That's, 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 that's a great amazing. idea. That's not we bad. Definitely Rushmore fretboard and then put them in. <laughs> but then so it had um so the, like moon the moon cycle around there and nice. I don't know I was just whatever. But I wrote a bunch of like I taught myself to play guitar on that guitar kind of thing, um, and then I moved up to a Maton. Nice, um, which is gorgeous. Yeah, because I kind of like tried to teach myself to play fingerstyle guitar by listening to Tommy Emmanuel and <laughs> try right. Yeah, not yeah, not. Here, I'm yeah. sitting there going like, oh, I guess Got it's Bert no. Whedon or Tommy Emmanuel <laughs> <laughs> playing a day, just playing like, a lifetime. And I just still um, can't. Yeah, still can't even remotely touch it. But like, um, but again, 
it's listening to people like that, listening to yeah. Tommy Emmanuel, listening to Stevie Ray Vaughan, the kind of the best at what they did, and I would sit there and go, oh, cool, I'll try it. Not understanding how impossible a task that was, but what it's enabled me to do is now kind of, I'd sit down and kind of, like, and I can, and um, the point being is I don't know the chords I'm playing, yeah. but. So when you're, when you're writing, is guitar your primary writing tool and then the, because obviously the, the, the phase album is yeah. pretty electronic. Yeah, it's, it's, there's not a lot yeah. of guitar on there. No. Although I've seen, you know, the live thing is, is more, is more of guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, do, is, do, you, do you gravitate towards the guitar, get the bones of the tune down and then it gets, you know, deconstructed into something more electronic? Or, yeah, or? I am. Um, no, I kind of. I used to write only on guitar, but then I found myself just writing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, as well, is I enjoy noodling on the guitar too much, so that and that gets in the way. Um, That's the curse, I think. Of I, I know. I mean, I, I'm. You know, I, I think I'm at that. St I've been at that stage in my guitar playing life of since early to mid twenties, right. where you cease to learn really, and you just noodle. Yeah. And I was talking to my friend. Um, Mick Taylor, who does other videos with us and stuff like that, great guitar player. Yeah. But he's he's really decided that he's going to learn properly again. So Deacon, you know, oh, forget the noodles yeah, and tricks, exactly. but learn it properly. Yeah. And he was showing me the sort of stuff that his guitar tutors, and it was like watching like a twelve-year-old trying to play guitar. And this is like a guy he can he's got like he can play stupid chops. Yeah, of course. And he's like, yeah. And then he showed me, and it's like, and it's like this. <laughs> And you're going, what's mate, going what? on? Sorry, excuse me. I don't, and I'm like, I don't think I put myself through that pain yeah. of doing that. But he's, you know, hopefully he's going to come out the other side as like. But that's, but that's the kind of thing. Is it's different. What you put in is shown by what you get out of it. At, at, yeah. at the end of it, it just depends. You know, what are you aiming to get out of it? Like, for, and for me, it's always been, I've just wanted to. It started out for me as a parroting thing. I just wanted to be able to do what they did. Yeah. That's the kind of thing. I remember sitting down with a 12 string. Like, what? I was such a f What a stupid thing to do. I was a kid. I borrowed my mate's 12 string. I sat down and watched... Um, uh, is it? No, not Scott or Butlin. Um, there's a Steve Ray Vaughan video where he does... Um, I can't remember what it's called. Right, now. Rude, rude mood. A rude um, mood. Yeah, I think that's the one. The fast, the oh, big, the big one. Yeah, uh, yeah, with the um. Uh... No, wait. Just that. I remember that one yeah. lick and sitting there going, I still and I still can't play it because he does the double. There's like a little. He goes. That. I I just remember sitting there for so long trying to and. Pressing pause on YouTube and then going back. I'm sorry, on other yeah. internet video streaming services. No, it's YouTube. Okay, yeah. fine, YouTube. And then, <laughs> like, pressing pause, going back, looking in and trying to figure out exactly where he was going with it. Because for me, it was just like, I wanted to. I'm the just Stevie Ray it. thing is. I don't. To drive you, on this. I, 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 you know, again, Stevie Ray is probably dead before you were even born. Yeah, isn't he, he? he died, um, I think, the year before. Yeah. yeah. So. It, and I, I never. I it's unusual to find Stevie Ray as. Was he like a? Was he the guy that? You, I, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling it. What I want to say is, most people don't discover Stevie Ray until they've started to play guitar, and then they discover him as a guitar hero. No, I, no, I discovered but the you, guitar through finding him. Wow. So, I mean, musically, that's. I mean, he's not mainstream really no. at all, is he? So, where, how did that? My happen? like, my dad was was to blame for it like I remember watching his don't blame him yeah, thankful thankful yeah. sorry thanks dad thanks Rob <laughs> no I um, I used to watch his my dad had a VHS tape of his performance his legendary performance the live at the Elmer Combo right. theatre that show and I just burnt that tape yeah. when I was a kid because yeah. um, I thought he was a magician I thought it was magic I remember seeing him I, I could not in my head understand like when he would have the guitar in front of him and then suddenly it was behind him and then suddenly it was on top of his neck. And given as well, uh, my age, I was about six or seven when I was watching yeah. this tape. 
I had no idea who Jimi Hendrix was at that point. Yeah, I'd heard his music, sure, but I had yeah. no idea about the cultural relevance of and the connection of what I was watching, the Steve Ray Vaughan video and, yeah. and Jimi Hendrix. So for me, this was not only genius and innovative, but magic. Yeah. Um, I love that. I never heard it called that before. But yeah. But, but it, I, it, it yeah. sort of is, isn't it? But it, and, and especially because it was like a grainy video and it was dark and I couldn't see the detail of it. So I couldn't see him just unclip his strap and then just put it back on behind him. I couldn't see those details. For me, the the body was such a part of him that it 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 physically melded with him yeah. and went through his spine and yeah. then appeared on the other side. That's what I saw. And I just remember being like, that's just, this is the most yeah. unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. And I am seven and I don't understand what that means yet. Oh, brilliant. Well, yeah, I think you've got a lot to thank your dad for. I, I think no, most I guitar players probably, yeah, I mean, all my early stuff was through finding my dad's record collection. Yeah. And it was, you know, Zeppelin, Free, yeah. um, Johnny Winter, yeah. you know, loads of, yeah. All vinyl as well. Yeah. I love the stories of like, you know, VHS yeah. and vinyl and yeah. all that sort of. I say, I used to call them big CDs. Big CDs. Yeah, I'm sure that's <laughs> not, I'm sure I'm not the only kid who, who did as well. But that's, but you're absolutely right that like, the thing that really solidified it for me with someone like Steve Ray Vaughan though was that I then kept finding him throughout my mum and dad's, right. um, their catalogue of music, like in the music that they would listen to. I remember like finding, finding out that, that that guitar solo that I really loved on Let's Dance by David Bowie was Steve Ray Vaughan. Like the minute I sat there and went, whoa, yeah. I, it suddenly I was like, that's, obviously it is. That's still, I think that's my favorite guest solo on any yeah. track yeah. ever. ever. And, it, and the, when the radio play it, there's like a radio edit. <laughs> Just there's, there's, and it's back and forth. But there's a radio <laughs> on it, let's dance, where, they, where there's no guitar solo in it. And it's like every time that ra it's on the radio, it's like, please let it be just the one. Have with the, the solo. I want the seven minute one. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's the thing is that, like, the solo that he puts in it, the one that they cut in, yeah. is that one note. He does the just, little twiddly bit, and then they cut out eight yeah. bars, and then he hits that note, and it's just him. Yeah, I, I, I kind forever. of feel bad, you know, in, in that. <laughs> I know David Bowie didn't really like that album where he thought, sort of felt he'd sold out really with that album and, and but yeah, I've, no. I've, oh man, if you want to, if, if anybody, you know, guitar players, yeah. young guitar players listening, Would I have, haven't heard that. It, it's like one note sums up just the whole, just the feeling so of emotion, like, so much emotion in that. Because like note, the, I think the only, the only thing you could possibly discredit Bowie for on that record is its production style is panders ever so slightly mm. to a decade mm. because it just sounds so obviously yeah. 80s but it also was a revolutionary pop record but like but this is the thing so it has Steve Ray Vaughan on it because that's the like uh, not I mean this is what this is going to just become it's going to become a Steve Ray Vaughan loving but I'm fine with it yeah um but like just the whole story behind that as well, I remember being fascinated by the whole because um, I remember I when I was about fourteen, I, I bought the uh, the DVD of um, Steve Ray Vaughan live at the Montreux uh, yeah. Jazz Festival. Yeah. That's probably the one I think most people will. Yeah, think of, exactly. It? The 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 performance he did in what is it like eighty two or something when he first goes over, he gets Mad, booed off stage. Um, Jackson Brown. David Bowie in the audience and that's what starts his career like oh, that whole yeah. thing is yeah. uh, that story is unbelievable because that's the thing David Bowie is I didn't know that that apparently that's what that's what happens so Steve Ray Vaughan gets booed off of stage at the at the Montreux Jazz Festival which is like what just because it's the wrong genre just because it's just because he was on the blue stage but it was oh, okay. mostly an acoustic right. sh uh, show and he was on I think either main support or like he was he wasn't headlining yeah. and he comes in with double trouble and he right. opens with Scuttlebutt Lynn and no one's ready for it um, people are like sitting down chilling out kind of yeah. thing and in comes Steve Ray Vaughan being Steve Ray Vaughan but uh, yeah exactly yeah. Um, but apparently Jackson Brown and David Bowie were in the audience Jackson Brown offers Stevie his, um, his studio to, uh, which is where they then recorded Texas Flood yeah. um, David Bowie invites him to come in and be on the Let's Dance record and ends up inviting him on the Let's Dance on the uh, the Serious Moonlight tour but uh, Steve Ray Vaughan says no because he goes off and kind of has his own career kind of thing but like just everything about that that time, and, and again, so going back to the point I was making way before, uh, just seeing Steve Ray Vaughan pop up in all of these different places where I was also finding music, yeah. you know, like that, 
Let's Dance album has uh, Steve Ray Vaughan playing guitar on it and it has Nile Rodgers as well all over it, like producing and playing guitar yeah. on it. it. My mind is just exploding with that information. And then on top of that, um, I find like Steve Ray Vaughan doing superstition covers and I watch the video of the superstition cover that Stevie Wonder, that Stevie Ray Vaughan does and Stevie Wonder's in the video. And that was like another huge, huge thing for me. I remember as well, because I only listened to like Stevie Wonder for a really long time as well, and then finding this cover of um, Superstition by Steve Ray Vaughan, and just having all these worlds collide. It, like When you were saying earlier about how Steve Ray Vaughan is, it's, it's even a bit niche for, like, for someone to, who's just starting out yeah. with guitar kind of thing. But for me, it, it was just so obvious, because all these other musicians I adored and loved so much obviously respected him. And it just made sense that I would as well, kind of thing. go from Stevie Ray then I mean where, where you know because of course from you know you're your, your, your actually I've not heard this I was reading a little bit about you and obviously there's there, there was an album that you kind of binned before Pulse yeah um, that uh, kind of sounded just like you just you know you'd, you'd written some tunes but it just hadn't ended up being as as original as you'd hoped it yeah, well, essentially, essentially, what happened was so I, I, like, the guitar just became a very strange instrument for me for a little while because after I found Steve Ray Vaughan, like, I obviously, obviously started my own blues trio, um, and did did that for a while, which was so much fun. And we would do Hendrix covers, we would do Stevie Ray Vaughan covers, we would do original songs of mine, and, uh, but the. But the music I was making was music to parrot the music I was listening to. Like I yeah. said, it was like I was, a, I became a very obvious kind of victim of my own, um, my own w want to please not only the people I was inspired by, but my peers. Like I just, I just wanted people to like the thing I was doing rather than. So what kind of stuff was it? Then? Well, like I mean. I was writing a lot on the acoustic guitar, so I was doing I was doing like really obvious ballads, yeah. and then doing really obvious blues songs, and that's kind of what I sat just in that world where a lot of other people at that age, you know, fifteen, sixteen, back in the early like mid two thousands, you know, I'd listen to a lot of John Mayer, and something yeah. was like, "There's my out, there he is," you know, a uh, white guy playing blues guitar and writing these pretty acoustic ballads, like yeah. finally, like, but I kind of came to realize that there's a reason why he did it and no one else did because for some reason he he did it yeah. and no one else did like as soon as i came to realize that and i got out of that cycle like and i and i went and i was i found that i was inspired by the similar like the same kind of music um so like i would a lot of my ballads for example are inspired by Jackson Brown and mm -hmm. by um Tom Waits actually as well and there's like for me there's just something so instantly poetic about just just that yeah just that turnaround for me that yeah. very californian feeling kind of yeah. stick that on an acoustic guitar and you know so what what i mean sounds like the sort of album i'd love to buy oh, but, but this is the thing right so <laughs> it's gonna re-release it yeah you know, right no 10 years time no i don't think i don't think i will like it I think, I, like I've said before, that I wasn't proud of any of the stuff I was writing and that, like, it wasn't an album that was me. But I think it's stupid for me to suggest that because I made it. Like, yeah. it happened. It does yeah. exist somewhere. Um, it just isn't... It isn't me anymore. 
And right. that, and just because it exists doesn't mean it needs to be released, kind of but, thing. But it might be you again, or is it one of these? You I just, don't know. Who knows? Possibly, yeah. Got to go on like, that uh, like, yeah, exactly. There's a, but the thing is, is there's just a lot of like, there's just a lot of. Um, when I listen back to it, and I don't a lot, but if a certain song comes into my head and I'm like, God, I can't. I, did I write that? Like, I can't remember where where that came from. And I'll go back maybe and listen to it. I haven't done this in years, but like it all seems very obvious and that's the thing that really right that's the one thing that kind of really um makes me feel o obvious like you've sort of followed a structure yes yeah, sort of there's a form there's a formula in place yeah. Da, 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 yeah yeah exactly yeah. like the, and, and here comes the and there's the, there's the chorus kind of so, thing and is the chorus that good no right. like and i just kind of i get really like i'm really really critical of myself simply because i'm only as good as i can be and if i'm not the best that I can be right now, mm. then I'm not good enough for myself. Right. I'm very hard on myself like that. Like no one else has ever said that to me ever in my entire life. I've had a, a kind of a very supportive group of friends and family since I was a kid. And the only person who puts me under that kind of pressure is myself. Yeah. Um, and I really do it. Uh, but this record was just, I, I had a very obvious wake up moment where it just it was just obviously not what I should have been doing. I'd I'd done it and the songs were there, but it was just so obviously not where it's I like should have been. Like a super brave and mature decision to make, given that yeah. <laughs> you know who who knew because you know you the, the 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 you had some backing for that album, didn't you? It's like yeah, there was you, a it wasn't I, like uh, no. So you must have at some point just thought <laughs> if I if I if I just bin this off. Yeah, because it's not uh, you know maybe that's it maybe then maybe th there'll never be another opportunity. Yeah, like and that's kind of but again that's I had to make that decision knowing that that was an option that that's mm. a possibility simply because it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't right it wasn't me it like it was because like I said because I'd made it and you know those songs came from my head absolutely or they came from my surroundings and I was able to be the right vessel to kind of ship them through but. It, it's a really weird one. Yeah. It's a very strange one because I, I, it it exists but it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and it took up such a huge part of my life, but it has no. But I have nothing to show for it. I mean, I mean with the benefit of hindsight, obviously it was the right but, thing but to that's, do. But, but at the time, you just don't know that. Like, yeah. and I've had a couple of decisions I've had to make like that because that, like, dropping that first record and like the backing that I had for it was from um, an independent um, uh, label based out in Bucks. Um, and I, they were so supportive and we had yeah. such a great relationship. And when I, like they knew that the decision was coming, I think yeah. they could feel that it was not right in some way. Um, yeah, like, and it was the first record I'd ever produced as well. Like I was, I was, and I was 17, 18 when I was doing it, sitting in this big studio with an engineer yeah. going, here's a, here's a bunch of songs and I guess I'm producing it <laughs> kind of thing. I just, I was a bit lost and I didn't quite know what I was doing, but I knew I needed to make these decisions myself. And that's the thing that I've kept. That's the thing I've really learned from it, that the decision I made for myself was not selfishness because I didn't do it for ego. I did it because I had to. It was self-preservation kind of thing. It was making sure I was keeping myself prepared and strong so that I would be able to come back and do it in whatever the next way was going to be and it just so happened to be that that was phase and that was this record so when you <clears throat> when you tour and yeah. you play live yeah you always give yourself a bit of you know guitar takes a little bit more sort of of the limelight yeah. doesn't it yeah um and i first uh i first saw you when you did uh, some you were invited out at the end of a james bay uh, gig at, yeah um uh, brixton academy brixton that's right uh, and James had only, that was like kind of his first, he'd only really just sort of broken through, didn't he? Yeah. And they say, yeah, yeah, invite my good friend Jack Garrett on at the end, you know. Yeah, I think he'd done, like, he done, it was, that was the last night, he had three nights at Brixton and he'd already that's done, right. I think Ronnie the night Wood before Ronnie Wood before, yeah. <laughs> yeah, small, small shoes, it's yeah. be fine at Ronnie like, Wood you want, before. You want like, me on the lot? <laughs> but there's like two, three thousand uh, James Bay fans in the audience and I would say, you know, probably about 80% girly fans all sort of go Ooh, I love you, and then you two come out and you just have this epic guitar battle yep. at the end it's pretty and much what sort of like you know 80% dumbfounded audience going 
Hang about, yeah, but all their dads loved it. Yeah, so. true. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was great. To, it was great to be. It was great to see. Um, you know, two guys who, you know, clearly are making a living. Um, you know, out of writing popular music, but you know, they're sitting there going to go boom. But yeah, let's just let's just tear things up. Yeah. A bit of old school guitar battle. Play, play guitar. Um, for them. But that's but that's the thing is that like for for a really long time now the guitar has kind of been. In in pop music, yeah, it's it's been a bit like oh no, mm, no, less, <laughs> less less of that. Come on, that's not. Don't want to be doing that anymore. And I do not understand why that is the case. And I think James really understands that as well. Yeah, um, it's the kind of thing like I think it's the same with the with the Mumford guys. Like regardless of what anyone thinks about my music or their music or anything, if they're able to walk out on stage in front of the kinds of people that they're playing to. And bring out an electric guitar and let it own the stage. Yeah. Then that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing for for music. It's a good thing for bands. It's a good thing for just live music in general. Like, not everything has to be press space bar. Let the show play and pretend like you're doing something. Like, it's good to walk out on stage and yeah. show musicianship and show um, discipline. Like this, though. I, for example, with the guitar, I taught myself. Like, I taught myself a discipline by doing that. It. The guitar taught me about not only just how to play it, it also taught me how to kind of treat myself with respect in some kind of way. You learn a lot about yourself when you, f not force yourself, but you work hard at something. Yeah. Um, and I think to be able to go up on stage, because you're right, like the, the, the crowd at that James Bay show, there was a lot of like fans of pop music there. Yeah. And then me and James spent 15 minutes playing blues guitar. I know, it was awesome. And, it, and people loved it. <laughs> That's it, but people really loved it because they were given something yeah. that was that was respected. Yeah. You know, me and James loved playing the guitar and that showed and I think that's why that's what connected with people the most. Probably yeah. not the riffs that we were playing, not because they were too good or interesting or it went over anyone's head, but simply just because the passion in which we played yeah. those licks, that's what connected the moment. Um, I think that's a good thing to do. Like for me, I don't know. If anyone ever said that like blues guitar or solo guitar was uncool, I would just put on a Prince video. Like you cannot argue that it's not the coolest thing in the world when someone like him could just do it. There's, there's always been that, you know, there's just such a fascination with, with me, with the electric guitar as so much more than an instrument. Right. You know, it's, it's just, I don't see. I know. I know. I'm probably going to sound biased as a guitar player, but I don't see keyboard players or. Um, I was about to say that you, you know you sometimes sort of see it maybe with a sax player or something like that, but where there's this this total connection with the instrument and there and particularly I guess the electric guitar with amps and pedals yeah. and distortion and feedback and everything like that you yeah. can just get it to do yeah. crazy stuff. I think you? I think the great thing about it as well is the guitar is always asking and expecting you to do a little bit more than you can. It kind of, it pushes you on to do that. Like, you have five fingers to do something down here with, yeah. but there's six strings on it. Like, it's <laughs> asking you to just put a little bit more work in to be able to play that extra string. Oh, that's a cool analogy. Like, but I love that about yeah. it. Like, even when, like, with the, like, because I love playing the piano. Absolutely love playing the piano. That's actually where I write pretty much 80% of the music yeah. I'm making at the moment is on is on a keyboard of some kind. But a, a piano feels... And this is because I don't play it right. Yeah. But to me, a piano feels two-dimensional in comparison to a guitar. Yeah. Because you have, you have one and zero. You have on and you have off. Like you obviously have tone and velocity, and you have, um, you can still put feeling into a piano. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But but you can't, you can't bend a note, and then put vibrato on the end of yeah. it. Yeah. Like you can with a guitar. Like you can make a guitar. Have you got, sing. got one of those rubber keyboards yet? Have you seen those? I've seen those. Well, they're, they're like. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah. I don't know if that'll catch on or not, but that's that to me was almost like, oh, maybe maybe that'll give that, that'll the, get rid of that kind of black and white thing and yeah. just go. Actually, there's every shade of grey. Yeah, there's there. every, <laughs> every. Yeah, no, but like I I don't know. It seems a bit. I think it's, I think it's an amazing instrument. I'd love yeah. to I'd love to play it actually, just to kind of just see. Well, we're going. I've got one in the store. We're going to fiddle with it. Have <laughs> Like. Yes, but, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, do you know, I, I feel bad as well now because I sort of think to myself, you know, Stevie, Stevie Wonder, he does to the piano kind of what mm. guys like Stevie Ray and Jimi Hendrix kind of did to the yeah. guitar. But I would agree with you that you know, it doesn't. I think it's a visual thing. 
it's like I've never seen I've never seen a piano player ex and I'm just talking visually excite me as much as I've seen a guitar yeah. player yeah you know, it's just, it's just yeah. something isn't there yeah I, 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 Howard I, Jones maybe with his guitar like you know right yeah <laughs> Probably but not. even then, there's something about yeah. that just which not, is just, just not. right. No, I um, no, I, I have to. I can. I do. I completely agree with you. I'm trying to think of because again, I'm a as a as a pianist or as a keyboardist as well. Like I, I, f I feel like I should be able to give an example, but I, I, I know what you mean. It's easier to find examples of people yeah. who like. There's a reason why guitar face is a thing. Yeah, you know, because oh, it, yeah, it God, it is. Like yeah. it's have you really got a guitar face? I do. You have a guitar face. Yeah, but it's. I mean, God, it's awful. It's horrible. It's just. I remember. I, I remember doing like Google image searches of, <laughs> of like other people's. Oh, I think of yourself. Of myself. God, You're doing no, guitar. No. Garrett guitar yeah, face. Just, just like, what am I doing? Scroll down. Yes, God, um, not that one. <laughs> not that, not that yeah. one. And that's a good not one. Not that one. Well, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> Put that in the fold. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just, but it's just, there's such a, uh, there's, there's a performance element to it. It is theatre. Yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of artists and performers and stuff get a bad rep because, because like, it's like, like shoegazing on stage and not treating your audience with respect and blah, 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 blah. Like, you have to, and this is something I walk out on stage, every single time I walk out on stage, I tell myself, I remind myself, I'm the least important person in that room. I'm the least important person who is in that situation. There are sometimes up to 5,000 other people who are way more important than me in that situation. Because I can walk out on stage and do the show. I can do that. I have worked really, really hard to be able to do that. Um, and I make sure that I can do it with passion and with gusto and then I put my performance on because I, I'm the least important one. Every single other person out in that crowd is way more important than me. It is more important that they have a good time. I can walk off stage and have a bad show. They can't walk out that room and say mm -hmm. I've had a bad show. I won't let that happen because that's that's not my, you know, my job is not to be self-fulfilling. My job mm -hmm. is to be aware that I'm very fortunate that the art I make touches people's lives every day. I don't ask it to, I don't force it yeah. to. I'm very lucky that people yeah. have, that, that people do that and are like a willing and allowing of the music I make to kind of be a part of their life and document their life. Um, so it's up to me to be able to perform it for them. Yeah. You know? That's deep. Super deep. But it's super deep. It's a bit too deep for two guys yeah. just sitting around with a couple of guitars, say, right? I thought we were just talking about distortion pedals. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <gasps> Strap man? Yeah. Yeah. Never never ventured over to the dark side or no, anything like that? No, I... Have you gone a bit side. more pointy ever? Or... <laughs> just, 
obscure. <laughs> um, no, I uh, I remember playing around with uh, a friend of mine had an SG. Um, ah, okay. When I was a kid, when I was back at school, and I would play around with that sometimes, but it was just a bit too different for me. I just I learned to play the guitar on one of these. Um, and are you, uh, do you, you know, you got to like a you, you, you use all the different pickups and settings and stuff, or you kind of you predominantly kind of sit yourself around at one. I use all of it, and because because I, I don't know what any of it does. Like it's awesome. My, it's my favorite thing in the world. The only I'm like because I'm and I'm just because I'm really into Blake Mills at the moment. And I just am starting to get my head around Pinky Finger Volume Switch, Ooh. like stuff like that. I'm just starting to get my head around really, all what, that kind Jeff of stuff. Jeff Becky kind of stuff. Well, just but I I mean even just. Just but there's a there's an American um, guitarist called Blake Mills who is astonishingly good at the guitar, and he does a performance of one of my favorite songs by him um, is called uh, uh, "What If I'm Unworthy." And there's a session actually he does. I think it's four Fender, um, and it's just a masterclass of right. how to control. I check him out. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm familiar with yeah. him. So. It's unbelievable. I will link it to you. Do you, you have to watch it? But he just he is just a yeah. But he then does that with pinch harmonics and blues and jazz chords. So it's not it's not showy off. It's always yeah. it's completely muso, but it's so And he sings as well? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable to watch. Um but that's really fun. Like I do a lot of um starting down on like starting down here for for solos and then yeah. the minute I wanna sing something I'll Hit the note and then transition up to that and then carry on there for a bit so and then bring it back down. For the like I, so you sing over the bridge pitch. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah. Because it's a thinner kind of sound yeah. and then I'll solo on that for a bit and yeah. then like in in my solos as well. I love playing chords in the middle of solos. Right. I absolutely love it. I do um, a version of a song like uh, "Worry," where I I do it on guitar and I have a bit in the middle of it where it all breaks down and it goes a little bit sly in the family stone. So I finish off the the chorus of the song. Could, is the, could we maybe? Could we, if we get uh, the levels right here, could we? I'll do a bit of it. Um, obviously, we'll have to be careful how loud the guitar is versus if all. I can the, do it. I, I, like I, I, I can do a little bit. Go on, something. yeah, I'd love it. Um, awesome. But like. That's pretty much the turnaround of the of the verse. So it's just those. It's just those three yeah. chords, and then sometimes that back into the A minor. It's just kind yeah. of nice four chordy song thing. Yeah. When I do it live, I'm way more into like the second verse, for example. Um, came around to say that you've been away like I. Necessary chords to fit in there. In the middle of it, so it comes out the chorus and just the. Pick apart the pieces you have and don't even bother about it. Don't you worry about it. Try to give yourself some rest and let me keep worried about it. Let me worry about it. It's 
cheap end, standing, and then... That's just awesome, stupid. And do you do much? Um, <laughs> do you do you just go? Do you know what? Not necessarily for for the, for the bigger gigs, but do you ever just go out and just go? I'm just going with the guitar. That's yeah, it. I have a, I have a blues I have a blues song I wrote for my dad when I was out in Texas. Um, I was out in South by. I've seen he wasn't there. yeah. I've seen like a minute long clip. This yeah. is just a it's a instrumental yeah. rather. I do it's that beautiful. sometimes. Yeah. It's Dad for Pretty introducing much. me yeah. to Stevie Ray Vaughan. Pretty much, yeah. And it's kind of like, because it's not, it's, but that's kind of, um, that's the thing I really love about it is that it isn't Stevie because he didn't really do that kind no. of finger shuffle stuff. Yeah. Um, but like, because that whole happy, that comes directly from the bluesy yeah. Tommy Emmanuel stuff that I really loved yeah. as, a, as a kid. Um, but then I'll put in, um, like just every now and then, just just hit the one. And yeah. Um, and all those kinds of things and just like, um, and even the, even the end of it, the, um, And then ends with my dad's favourite note of all time. <laughs> Just the big, <laughs> the big E, yeah, the big, the big E, yeah. So, so you're, so you're self-confessed then. So you're strat man, strat man. You're a faithful yeah. one guitar man. This is, this is Margaret. Um, Margaret. Yeah, this is Margaret. It's named after. I got this the day after I found out that my grandma Margaret had uh, passed away. I was out in mm. LA, um, kind of yeah, at the end of last year. Um, doing a show and this kind of came into my life just as she had moved into the next room um, oh, and she was yeah story, she was a huge it? huge supporter of um, of what I was kind of trying to do what I'm still trying to do um, so it kind of made very very apparent and obvious sense that she would continue to be oh good for you man That's yeah a really nice yeah. thing to do so you got it American Standard Strat yep. Rosewood Board yeah um, always Rosewood always Rosewood always Rosewood yeah what any because just feels like it's, it's dirty. Yeah. For yeah. Me, I think it's I think it's totally psychosomatic. I'm pretty sure it's a hundred percent placebo effect, but I have a I feel like I can hear a roughness on the like on this kind of fretboard. Which on I the, which I think does exist. Or on yeah, the, yeah, just on when you dig into it. My yeah. whole thing when I'm trying to achieve tone is I want it to sound like I'm tearing through paper. Yeah. That's the just that shh, that's the kind of crystal clear nice kind of top end but something that's tearing something yeah. that rips um it's the kind of the reason why i got the tube screamer because it's yeah. why I, it's what i love about yeah. steve ray Vaughan's tone um and that's kind yeah, of yeah steve, but stevie was a uh, he had that sort of bell like kind yeah. of quality to the to the i mean i i i, I so remember you know he was the, the for years and years was doing that whole heavy gauge string thing kind yeah, of before 13s. anybody else Really that's how I that's I've it, forgotten you know. about this. I tried to strengthen my fingers up once by only playing on thirteens because yeah, not that I'm totally ridiculously obsessed with Steve Ray Vaughan or anything. But then he what? But then I, the bit that nobody ever told you was that he was in E flat all the time as well. Yeah, right. So, so you're, 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 you're playing thirteen. I'm going like, not, I can't not even not bend up yeah. half a tone. I can't. <laughs> and he's like bending three. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. It, that's insane. Isn't it? That's <laughs> insane. Uh, but. Okay, so yeah, man, that's that's very cool so and a lovely, lovely story about Margaret. Yep. Thank you. 
Is this is this a that's my the, the, the that's Pulse my thing or yeah, is, no? The, the, yeah, it's just my this is the album I work for yeah. Phase. This is um, Phase. Sorry, oh, oh, they call it talking, Pulse. Oh, don't worry about it. That's, that's a Pink um, Floyd album, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I'm here you, with David Gilmore today. <laughs> Hello, He's everyone. How are you doing? Different to the last time I saw him. No, I believe that's how he talks. <laughs> no, I um, yeah, no phase. Uh, this is the album up with a phase. I just kind of, um, I like having this around. This is kind of this is a nice big important symbol in my life at the moment as well. Like the guitar is, and in the way we were talking about it earlier, there is something slightly beyond the player about it, which I really love. Like obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't speak without someone's hand up his ass but like there's almost something beyond that about it I, I and that's why I think so many people like to like include their personal kind of totems when they're yeah. designing guitars yeah. or when they're kind of putting guitars together because there's something so inherently instinctively personal about it oh, um, yeah so this is kind of that's why she's called Margaret and this is I think the second this is like the second strat that I own you got a white one I've got it's a, a creamy color. Yeah, that was um, actually I was I was playing that. Um, that was a friend of a friend of mine. Actually, I was oh, okay. playing that for a little while, which is yeah. a lovely. That's a Mexican, actually. I'm a big oh. fan of Mexican strats. Yeah. The first strat I ever had was a Mexican. And you never guess what? It was a three color sunburst, uh, and I even bought a little um, black scratch custom, plate. No, I got, no, I got the uh, the shiny custom sticker that um, Steve Rayborn has on his guitar. Awesome. I kind of built my own SLV custom. Like I got the strap with all the yeah, what, yeah everything, but but I, she was Mexican. And... I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I think it's so, that's one of the other nice things about guitar is that young people are constantly uh, finding and you know, these sort of guitar pioneers and, and, it, and they never become, electric guitar players kind of never become uncool. I kind of think it, it would, even if somebody, you know, if, if somebody, you know, in your position had come along, you know, breaking, you know, uh, pop artist sort of, you know, and said, yeah, Buddy Holly was, you know, I think it would be, that would be cool. You know, it wouldn't just, it wouldn't be, you know, you could never go, yeah. you could never go, yeah, Richard Clayderman was like, <laughs> Or, or who's the or, or Liber, Liberace? He, you know, he'd be like, what? hang about. That's like you know. I, but, yeah, but I you know what you mean. Any, you could say like you know Chet Atkins or or, or yeah. any of those kind of guys that you know, and they're just all cool. Yeah, there's yeah. something. There's something. I, I do. I do get. I do get what you mean. There is something about. I'm trying. I'm trying in my head. I mean, actually, no. I'm not going to go into that whole world because I think that there are certain guitarists that aren't cool. Aren't that cool I think it definitely is kind of possible to definitely just or not, we'll not we'll cool. beat this whole I, bit out it's right fine. it'd be great we'll beep it yeah, all out just say, let's just say a bunch of names, names. and then the edit just, yeah, just only, the whole this yeah. other thing's just beat yeah. so come on then or just replace every name that we say with me saying Stevie Jack Ray. Garrett or Stevie Ray Vaughan <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan <laughs> <laughs> no I no but I think more than anything I think it's not necessarily that the guitarist isn't cool I think it's that the music that they were making is not doesn't date well. Yeah. So like for me, I think there's a lot of like '80s guitarists from like thrash metal, which just for me yeah. and like, not like like uh, glam rock and, and yeah. that kind of stuff, but like the '80s version of it. That for me and for my generation, uh, I think is just a bit like I'm. A, I'm gonna let you do you. I'm gonna go back another decade and go to the '70s instead and look at those guitarists. I, yeah. There's something about that decade which is kind of I think I don't know. I could maybe think of a couple. But I'm not going to. I'm, 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 I'm desperately sort what of. About you? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I, I think I, I just, I, I pretty much just like to um, go. There's guitar playing that I like, and there's guitar playing that I, I like less, and there's guitar playing that I don't. See, that's like. there you go. Yeah, and I guess if you're, if yeah. you're one of those guitar you're players that right. happens to play guitar music that I don't, I like, don't like, then I, then I guess unfortunately you'll be. You'll be in the in that cut. Yeah, you'll get in that. And, I, th I, and I think that's exactly. Um, I think that's exactly yeah. what it is. But the, lot of, but technically, I think guitar playing that I. I'm quite. Um, I like I like guitar with feeling. I like guitar with melody. Yeah. Um, and I and I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not a big fan of kind of technique over, the you know. So it doesn't really matter what the genre no. of music is. If it's just yeah. technique yeah. driven yeah. guitar playing, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll normally do this. You can I can normally feel my internal body clock of going, fuck, that's amazing. And then it's like, but so boring. 
<laughs> you know. No, you're absolutely uh, right. Then, yeah. I have a, a really good friend of mine. He's in a, a band called Ceramic. Um, spelled with an S, S E R A M I C. Um, they're actually coming on tour with me at the end of the year. Um, I remember um, the kind of the guy who writes a lot of the songs, plays a lot of the music, a guy called Marcus Foster. He um, is a blues guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, the music that Ceramic make is, is very much more um, kind of soul influenced. Um, Cause, but he's like a huge Prince fan, and, 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 like a huge Tom Waits fan in the same way that I guess I am. But like, I remember me and him having a conversation one and him saying a similar thing to me about the way that I played, where he was just like, I lo like, I, I, I like, because I really admire his solos and he really admires my solos. And we were talking about like, why? And then he goes, well, there's like, there's something about just going like, the notes, man, mm. just play the play the music. And I'm sitting there to an extent going like, I'd like to hear the notes, but I completely agree with you kind of thing. Yeah. Because there's a very similar way to like, you know the key you're playing in, you know the shapes, Yeah. just let your ears and your mind do the rest of the work. Yeah. Like the technique of it is, to some people the be all and end all and very important. And you kind of can't yeah. judge them for that because that's how they appreciate that kind of music. But I think for a lot of other people and myself included, it's, it's a lot more about like, I'd rather hear a guitarist make a mistake but see in their face that that doesn't matter to them yeah and then just go on and keep playing the rest of the gig kind of thing but I, that, that has to come from an inner confidence in yourself doesn't it because if you if you approached every guitar solo of i'm i don't really know what's going to work and what's not i'm just going to go for it yeah. i suspect it would be a car crash well it? yeah no exactly but that's i think it's i think you're absolutely right that you have to kind of just you have to agree mm. with yourself You've got to know I think we're, I certainly think that we're lucky with, you know, with the guitar. I think if you play any note with enough conviction, yeah, it, it becomes the right note. Yeah. And as long as you know that I mustn't be here for too long before I go to another <laughs> note, which is or maybe it's, more of a right note. Or if it's in some kind of melodic solo, I just got to repeat it <laughs> yeah. the next time I come what back was around. The, uh, <laughs> who was the guy that, that um, oh man, it went YouTube crazy and it, I felt so sorry for him. The guy that did the, the Country Music Awards thing recently. Oh, Nick, um, Jones. Nick, Nick Jonas. Nick Jonas. <laughs> Straight who, out with it. Came out and played. Yeah. And, and I just think, oh, that's heartbreaking, isn't yeah. it? Because I'm sure it's like it's a weird thing because you, the guy obviously has talent. Like mm. uh, that is obvious, regardless of how that talent has been managed and produced and given to the rest yeah. of the world. But like he obviously has it, and the dude can stand up in front of the, yeah. that many people and play the guitar. Just not that night. Just not that night, yeah, and that's just, and that sometimes that happens. Like I do, I I feel I'm there. Right, I'm with you. I feel I feel for him, because it's not even like in all the rehearsals he was playing the exact same solo and everyone was going. We sh we have to tell him, what the f like? No, it's like he was obviously doing it fine, and then just I think he even said he had a brain fart. But it's it, a mu it must be. Know. It's got it's, to be brain fart in ear monitoring fault. Just like I can't remember. I mean that sort of be. Everybody's done that, haven't they? Yeah. But just not necessarily in front of 30,000 people. Well, or and then millions, millions of people at home. Like Country Music Awards, well, yeah, the, one yeah. of the biggest shows in the country. Like, But I don't know, but then there's another part of me which is a bit more like, but you can play the guitar, man. So like, you should save it. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it, that's a really weird one because yeah. I've definitely been in that situation before, but I've always walked off stage and gone, I knew I, I should have been able to get myself out of that situation. Like I should have been able to. And if I couldn't, I'd be like, then I've got some practice to do. Right. Kind of thing. Do you I, practice a lot still? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I, just, no. I, you, I, you just think you're, you're, you're playing enough music and touring enough to almost not kind of, to... Kind of that. I'm very much in a place of muscle memory at the moment as well. Yeah. I'm, and, like, and I'm running down at the end of the year and I'm slowing down with touring and slowing down in lots of other ways and kind of finding I have more time to, to practice. But I've never practiced. Mm. It's horrible. I feel really bad saying it because the pra I've, I, I always find, and this kind of actually comes to the conversation we're talking about about the idea of like um, music that seems too disciplined and too yeah. like uh, doesn't it sound amazing? But I mean, does it really feel great? Kind of yeah. thing versus the feeling of something. Like I never really practice because I think practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes routine. Uh, that's interesting, and I. But maybe that's just for me because I don't yeah. believe in perfection. Yeah. I don't believe. I don't think it's. I think it's a silly thing to try and achieve. I think the minute that you wake up and go, "Cool, I'm perfect." Like, what are you going to do tomorrow? Kind of thing. So I, I don't believe in perfection, but I believe that you should still strive for it. So you're looking for a perfect imperfection. Yeah, that's pretty. That's exactly. It's, it's, We're getting just, deep again. It's two guys no, like, with a couple of Fender Strats getting I know, deep. I, I, it's not I, what these people want to see. I like. I, I like it. I like it. Well, look, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. 
bring the thing back to the gear yes, again. Yes, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, this is the beast, isn't it? Yeah, is I don't this, usually, this is... I don't usually play, um, I don't usually have a, a cab, I don't have a, co a thing like this, I play on a combo. Um, but yeah, I play on the Rock of Herb Mark III, Rock of Herb. And there's Orange, that Rock of Herb 15, Mark III, Rock of Herb. Where did you, yes, that tongue twisting, no. That one. <laughs> where did, so where, what, what was your, presumably when you had your um, uh, first Electric guitar, you know, yeah. you just had to say. I played, I played on a more. Fender Frontman 212. Yeah. Oh, that's a biggie. The yeah, big twin. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sell so many of those, and hey. I think it's just because it's the cheapest yes. massive yes. amp that yes. you can buy. Yes, yes. Because uh, because the trick that they did very well, the, I think the trick that all amplifiers do very well is they all look the same. Right. So you can get a shit one, but you can still like, oh, this is just my. It's just my, this is just my Marshall amp. And it's just, but it's like the one that attaches to your belt that you can get for 50 quid. It's like, oh, it's just my Marshall amp. It's got gain on it as well as treble. That's about all it does, but it's here. Like, but it looks like... Looks like a proper amp. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, just yeah. funny I shrunk the amp. Yeah, right, size. there you go. So where, where did yeah. you... Was this your first valve amp when you went rock a verbal? Yeah, you had I other... played... No, I played... I tore that 212 apart. I, really? Yeah, I That's... got my first guitar when I was 16. Yeah. Uh, first electric guitar when I was 16 and I got the amp as well and I toured that thing when I was still when I started doing the new music wow yeah. so I started with touring that to a, to a point where I took it into a shop because it broke and they went mate buy a new one <laughs> It's yes. gonna be less expensive. <laughs> I, mean, like, I, I always, I always kind of find that that's that, that's inspiring to know that. No, not no, because I knew it already. But I love stories about you know I had a I had a you know you had a three hundred and fifty pound electric guitar and a two hundred pound guitar amplifier. Yeah. And you made you you were still inspired to make great music and tour it and gig it and do your thing. And I don't think it lessens the the joy of owning no. more expensive instruments no. but it, it certainly dispels this it dispels any feeling that you can't make good music I, without I've always I've always kind of stuff right? yeah exactly I remember my mum used to say this to me when I was a kid and I always used to be like sure mum because I didn't I didn't like compliments um, but she would always say that she would find it interesting that I could um, I could pick up a like a bad guitar and make it sound good kind mm -hmm. of thing. And I just remember being like, this is the point, you know, it's not the guitar, it's the player kind of thing. And I, I don't know, and I like, um, I'm not blowing smoke on my ass or anything, but like, I have, I've traveled with that compliment. I remember yeah. her saying that and I remember later in later life kind of going, oh yeah, cool, like that's actually a good point. Like beyond it being about me, mm -hmm. that's just a good thing to remember. I. And I think a lot of it came from the fact that I was like, yeah, I toured that amp and that guitar for about eight years. Yeah. And then definitely like, yeah, I upgraded. But. So what, what did you find that was the sort of, you know, cause I, I'm, a, I'm a huge lover of, um, I'm a huge lover of, of valve amplifiers and what they, the, I kind of think with solid state amplifiers, they can they can do that sort of first stage of tone and they can do volume mm. and they can be reliable mm. and they're affordable and everything mm. like that. But there's a there's a there's a something that a valve yeah. amplifier does where you sun you start discovering things that you can do with a pick or with a yeah. with a with a note or yeah. a, or a volume control that yeah they're they're not apparent with a solid state amplifier. Yeah. Whereas they are. so no, I'm completely with you on that. There's something about there's something about like even today in this session, like I've got. One, I've got a cheap screen where I've got my guitar, I've got this amp, and I spent the first 20 minutes twiddling about with all the yeah. things because that was still trying to wake up. Yeah. Like, I really appreciate that about an instrument or about an amp or about any kind of musical technology. Yeah. If it itself has to work to get to a place where it's ready to do something, yeah. good. Like, patience is key. That's why I love analog synth so much. Like, yeah. turn it on, leave it. Let, it, let it wake up or play around with it and see what you can get out of yeah. it in those 20 minutes because you'll never get it again. Yeah. Like, I just, I love not knowing i love i love not knowing which is crazy because i'm a control freak yeah well you mentioned before didn't you that this sort of this this perfect imperfection thing which is and valve amplifiers and i suppose guitars to yeah. a certain extent that they are they're not you know they're not different every time you use them in the sense of of like oh 
half you know radically different but they, no. there are certain there are certain days Dude. wind you know wind blowing in the right direction everything happens and and it all just and I'm, in, I'm convinced that that's some in the weird. same but in the exact same way that all those things can happen and it can just go what the f this isn't my guitar like mm. I have on so many occasions been up on a stage and like because that's the thing like a lot, doing a lot of festivals at the moment yeah. you don't get time to walk up on stage and check everything's yeah. fine you kind of trust the the crew that you the family you have on the road have, yeah. have done it all in the right way so that it will sound as close to as it did yeah. yesterday kind of thing so I walk on stage a couple of times and I'll play the guitar and I'll go not today really yeah but then Jesus. you've got this duty to the audience yeah. to smash it out to the smash park it out still. the park so you kind of so I so you know I have it. a system set up so I can talk to my guys anyway yeah. so I'll just go guitar's not right and because I'll be doing seven things at once yeah. that's all I can say in the split second I've got but in between lyrics and you know uh, Jay my uh, my tech will just be like I'm on it and he'll just run on stage he'll just whack he'll just like uh, sort the the attenuator out kind right of thing. and that's usually the thing that saves me that's actually the reason why I went for for this yeah because the Mark II didn't have this yeah. Um, and I was playing the Mark II before I went up to the Mark III. Um, yeah, I went I went amp shopping about a year ago and set up a, I think a Vox Offender and an Orange, mm -hmm. and the Orange just sang yeah. with me kind of thing. Yeah. What's so? I mean, attenuate. I have this sort of love hate relationship with attenuators. I, right. I think I sort of, I think I hate them because <laughs> there's a there's an expectation with an attenuator that you can gun your amplifier like Eddie Van Halen would, right. put the attenuator on so that it's bedroom level yeah. and still sound like, still Eddie, Van sound like Eddie Van Halen. And so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of, I think what I liked on, on the orange and what I like when I hear people do it using attenuators is, is they, they will get, they'll get, that they'll never use the attenuator to take away more than about 25% of the volume. Yeah. Cause I think if you, if you take more than that away, the amp begins to sound yeah. artificial. Yeah. And, and I've had loads of amplifiers where I've just gone, do you know what? It sounds better if I just turn the volume down yeah. rather than yeah. buy this expensive because, attenuator. Because, because, that's, because the thing is as well is that what you're trying to achieve is a certain sound for the venue that you're in. Yeah. So if you're in a bedroom, you're, you're trying to achieve yeah. a sound that will play well in a bedroom. Yeah. Like You don't want to sound like you're in an arena. Yeah. You want to sound like you're in a bedroom. How, how did you find, because when I uh, interviewed James earlier this year and we did it at um, Hammersmith. Hammersmith. Uh, yeah, I remember you went out and did that. And I'm, doing, I'm doing that show actually very soon, yeah. So that was the first time that I'd ever been in a venue that size, size with, with just the band in it. Yeah. And he had all his valve amps turned up on yeah. stage. And they weren't like crazy loud, but no. you know, gigging but volume. Gone. Yeah. And you just go, I don't, this venue is yeah. obviously magically yeah. acoustic. Yeah. So when was your first what yeah. was your first one where you where you'd gone from playing to sort of a, you know a couple of hundred people to playing to maybe a thousand people and all of a sudden there was and you just went oh my god yeah this is I remember what it's about. I remember being doing some festivals I know I remember doing um, like festivals and support tours for big bands doing caps that I couldn't even dream of yeah. like I recently came off of um, a big Mumford tour that I did last year um, which was like surprise booking yeah. like I know the guys and they're great but I and, and I know that they're, they're, that they kind of dig dig the music I make which is really cool um, so when they invited me to go on tour with them yeah. and it was like a few months kind of thing yeah. that we ended up doing um, it was amazing uh, so I remember the first time I kind of got the amp out and we did venues like the O2 yeah like arenas yeah and suddenly because I'm only hearing it in my ears obviously right. and then but it's important to take your ears out every yeah. now and then like I remember we're kind of retuning the amp at the moment me and my crew because we're adding in a couple new pedals and yeah. trying to take away some stuff and add some new stuff I've been I've been touring on a the Moog uh, Mini Fuga Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, that yeah. was my. That's that, like more fuzzy kind of vibe. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. Yeah. But that's the thing is when you put a tube screamer mm -hmm. through it, it turns into thrash. Because you're that um, uh, the little guitar stabs in kind of worry yeah. are pretty heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they're heavy and usually and like when I do them like this. Um, um, well, yeah, they're heavy and uh, and I I use a not like a heavy style, but t tonally. Yeah. That's what, like, Damn. Well, yeah, because I've got to, I, I put an oxy pedal on it as well to oh, kind of beef cool. it, to beef it out. Cool. So I kind of because a lot of what the what I do in worry is because I'm playing the guitar, I don't have hands to do anything else. So I have foot foot switch that sets my chorus off, and so yeah. I can sing and play guitar, and I'm just going. And I'll 
and it's all riff. Like I yeah. can't afford to put chords in there because yeah. I've got an octave pedal yeah. on, kind yeah. of thing. So I'm doing a lot of. Um, Kind of stuff, but the, I and then I blast into this solo, and yeah. I was using so yeah, using this 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 Moog pedal to as my boost, and it's and it was fine going through a Fender, and as yeah. soon as we started to put it through the Orange, it just wasn't working. Like right. I love the pedal; it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it wasn't working, so we've actually swapped it out, and we're testing the um, two-stroke at the moment. Right. Um, That's a, that new, is a fuzz pedal thing, though, isn't it? It's, it's fuzz pedals are. Because you, you've got the Tube Screamer, and yeah. what I like about the Tube Screamer is the Tube Screamer is one of those kind of, it's safe. It's a safe pedal to sort of plug right. into any amplifier and great? just get like isn't a it safe, beautiful. Yeah. Like even, even the tone I've got today isn't my, it's not my tone. Yeah. Like it's a bit mid heavy um, right now and even still, it, like I like, I use my, this is the thing, yeah, I use it as a clean. Yeah. So I have it on all the time. Yeah. Um, it's because you can kind of, it sounds like it's saturating rather than driving. Um, like it sounds like it just sounds yeah. like you're playing when you play it soft sorry yeah. I mean uh, it sounds like you're putting the guitar through yeah. a tape machine like I, it's just I've read that the you know back in the 80s when everybody had a tube screamer all the touring guys had tube screamers yeah. it, was, it was because they knew that they could turn up at a venue with hired backline oh, put the plug tube it in and, in it, front, yeah. and, it, and it was there always on that's really kind of pedal that's really interesting but fuzz is fuzz is the the complete opposite of that, mm, in mm. that it's it's um, a hugely uh, I won't say unfriendly, but you know it's what what guitar, wh which pickups are in that guitar, what amplifier, mm. what kind of guitar player are you, where are you going to have the volume set, yeah. all this kind of stuff, yeah. and you go, I've nailed it, and then you can go, you can just change guitar or plug it into a different amp, totally, totally, it's the worst pedal the worst I've <laughs> ever owned in the universe. Yeah, um, which is stable, like that's yeah. exactly, and that's exactly what it is. Is you you kind of you know what you're getting and. I I honestly don't think I'll ever not play through a tube screamer. I have fallen so head over heels in love with yeah. these things because um, it's the only. That's just what I've been playing on since mm. I was since I was sixteen. Really. Like, Did you see? Re okay, here's guest uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's tube screamer uh, went up for sale on eBay, eBay or eBay. recently. Do you know what it went for? Is it f uh, fifty? Or was it five hundred thousand? No, no, not half a million dollars. No, I think it, I think it went for something like thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars. I said five hundred, didn't I? I was, yeah. I was a little it, bit it was, but you just end up sort of going, <laughs> oh man, that's that an was... insane amount of money for. A but the history in it. Yeah, it's cool history. Yeah, it's probably just someone's digging yeah. it up a bit and going, oh, it's oh, no, it's, oh, yeah, it's probably like it was on his B rig. Yeah. Uh, no, like I um, yeah, I just these things because that's what I mean is that like I was saying when you play them softly they don't overshadow what you're doing yeah but the minute that you then put yeah. some weight behind it it yeah. breaks up and there's <laughs> something about it like the one we're actually having a bit of an issue at the moment me and me and my my team because um i've been touring on my tube screamer which yeah. again i got when i got my first guitar yeah. i got when i got my first amp and i have not done anything to yeah. it and it is dying oh no and as pebbles do when they die she, like she is going out in a oh, blaze of glory. of glory. Like she sounds so good at so the So it's moment. like the Van Halen Martian just just yeah. before it's about to die. And that's, that's the best sound. And this is where really? I am right now. Yeah. So we've we've had a couple of we've gone out and got a couple more um, tube screamers of the same model and we've put them in the rig and they just always don't I sound the same. Must introduce you to uh, Dan really Steinhardt, annoyed. who is uh, he's a, a he is pedal guru ever. Well, because this is the thing that we're looking and for. He will save it, mate. He I, will save I, it. And part of me is like, because we're, I've got, I've got to retire it because yeah. if I no. don't, it will die and then break and I'll lose it forever. But the other part of me is we're trying to find the same make from the same year and right. we can't get them anywhere. Like just in the hope that oh. we might be able to, like, if you can, that would. I think he would save, save it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Because so. he just sounds amazing at the moment. Because it's like we A and B it with a couple of other tube screamers and you put it in and you can yeah. like you play it soft and like yeah, it sounds great. And then the minute that like well, I they, really wish I'd brought mine with me because there's a the way that she cracks up at the top, the way that she. Well, breaks, they've componently evolved year, year after year after year for yeah. you know forever tube yeah. screamers. So yeah. you're completely you know apps just because you've got yeah one from a certain year doesn't mean it's going to sound the same as one from yeah another year. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, 
So well, look, yeah, so that's my cheap screamer. I love it. So and it, and uh, I, I love the kind of simplicity and the organicness of, yeah. of the rig. Yeah. Um, so where's I, I'm I'm going to do the sort of the cliche kind of you know this is the outro now basically. So what, yeah, where what's next? You know what's but, next? Because yeah. I, I mean it, I know. I don't even know if we'll do an intro to this video or not, whether people just work it out as we're going on. I think people just work it out. I think we, they we might just do. have a nice chat. Just so catch so up with us. Yeah, well, let's, let's do the intro at the end here. So just thanks for obviously joining us to, to, to sit and listen to Wait, me. We've been, Jack filmed, we've been recording this whole... whole I thought thing. this was just the pre-interview. No, uh, this is... No, oh, we're just going to find... Okay. We'll right, just find up. a uh, <laughs> section of... And, and basically... So, uh, yeah, Jack... Hi, I'm Jack uh, Garrett. Um. <laughs> if you... If you if you've never seen, uh, if you've never seen Jack play live, he's he's a min musical phenomenon uh, of just obviously you know talented keyboard player, talented uh, guitar player, uh, singer, songwriter, everything. But simultaneously, mm. and that's kind of the crazy mm. thing is. Thank is, you very much. That's very kind. And I and it's it's as it's visually almost as fun to watch as it is just to listen to in the sense of because I just sit there going all he needs is a pair of cymbals strapped to his knees yeah. and a horn under his arm and he's just Actually, got the interesting you say you're what's going, next you're going to uh, yeah <laughs> big, um, bass drum on the back and it, it is insane uh, so anyway so that's Jack and, and uh, you know you've kind of been um, lucky enough to be recognised by the Brits and, and yeah. uh, you know the, the, the album phase has obviously done really really well for yeah. you um, but we thought we would try and just talk chat about, about guitar guitars for a bit yeah. um, today which I never get to do yes. honestly and thank you for having me because this is so yeah it's such a rare thing to do it's it's funny how like and I'm sure James gets it as well just yeah yeah just J James uh, no, I'm sure James Bay gets it as well because he's a, he's a phenomenal guitarist. Yeah. But you kind of because um, I've definitely found it. It's been a really interesting thing. It is so rare and so nice and so welcoming to just sit down and talk about the thing that really yeah. really drives my passion. Yeah. Um, which is music because more often than not I'm asked you know I must ask more about hey. Uh, so beard. Yeah. Uh, well, that's you. So James, James is the hat. Hat. Yeah. James You're is the hat, beard. beard. And I. And it's. It's like. Oh God. Is that? And it must. Yeah. You. You probably it's do. Easy, like yeah. five minute interview after five yeah. minute interview. It's just easy. Amazing. Easy. It's. It's. It's, like, it's, yeah. it's easy target. It's obvious. It's. It's yeah. just. It's whatever. It's nothing. It's nothingness. Right. But it's fine for the five minute <laughs> deal. But it's so nice to be able to come in and just actually talk about because, I've always said this in interviews. If I get asked bad questions, I'll give bad answers yeah. because. I have no, I don't know, like how else can I answer it? But when I get a good question, oh my God, I won't shut up. And thank you for not letting me shut up for an hour. No, like, I, I yeah. and, and I, 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 I two, for two hours. <laughs> is it really? No, it's not quite, is it? But <laughs> this might be, we're on, hi, welcome to part seven yeah. of the uh, Captain Meets Jack. I know, Garrett. actually, it's just, it's just all been put down into a two minute video. <laughs> uh, it, no, it's, so, so I guess that's the intro. Um, <laughs> And, um, Please put this up uncut. I will, I, I, Please the, just the unedited. One, just put the, the whole thing up. And uh, so where is, you know, I mean, I, I, when I was when I talked to James, it, it, ironically, he, he was sort of saying that despite the fact that uh, album number one probably wasn't as guitar-y as he initially thought it might be, you know, the, the production was mm -hmm. much more stripped back. Yeah. Um, He'd almost gone, but you know what? I'm loving making music that is that isn't utterly reliant on yeah. everything being heavy guitar. Yeah. So do you do you you know are you quite comfortable with this idea that you're a you're a guitarist kind of? Well, you know, what are you? Are you a musician first and foremost yeah. who plays guitar, or is yeah. that how you see it? Or are you a guitarist that's just making music that both I don't know, just like both in? simultaneously and all the time kind of thing. I. I love music so much. Um, when I'm playing the piano, I'm a pianist. When yeah. I'm playing the guitar, I'm a guitarist. Um, when I'm playing the drums, I'm a drummer. Yeah. Um, I just am so so in love with being able to communicate with so many people without saying a single word. And um, as good as my vocabulary may or may not be, I can say more <laughs> with a guitar than I can with any other thing. Um, 
And I think that's kind of what it boils down to for me. I'm, I, I definitely would consider myself to be a guitarist first and foremost, um, but a musician above everything else, yeah. I think. I don't know. Well, that's, for, that's for other people to um, decide. So wherever it goes, yeah. whether it's more yeah. stripped back, more electronic, yeah. more guitar, it's just going to go with the flow. Yeah, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be different to what it was before. Oh, I, don't, I don't want to repeat myself. Well... It's been a super, super Thank pleasure you so having much. you in. Thanks for having me, Lee. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming Thanks in. Thanks very much. And yeah, check him out. I'll put some links in the description below. You yeah. can go find out more about Jack. New album Pulse. New album Pulse. Out. Pulse, yeah. <laughs> Pulse. This is, uh, this is James Garrett. James Garrett with his yeah. album Pulse. Apparently he's a keyboard player or something. Yeah, something anyway. like that. No, sitar. Yeah. Sitar. No, ho yeah. ho uh, go to, hody, hody, hody. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. <laughs>